In 2024, it looks like we finally reached a point where we can actually observe surfaces of distant stars. And specifically, the telescopes have gotten powerful enough, or to be more specific, astronomers have learned to analyze data from these telescopes so well that they can now accurately reconstruct what the surface potentially looks like with a relatively high accuracy. And so today we're going to discuss two recent studies that as always you can find in the description that focused on two really famous stars. The North Star, technically known as Polaris, which is also the closest Cepheid variable star to planet Earth, and a star known as R. Doradus, which actually represents the largest star in the night skies after our Sun. And in this case, both stars were assessed by two separate telescopes. The Georgia State University's CHARA, also known as Center for High Angular Resolution Astronomy, and the famous ALMA or Atacama Large Millimeter Array. Both basically be networks of telescopes that allow us to have a relatively high resolution of various distant objects. And I guess here, let's start with R. Doradus, a star that's probably a little bit less known, even though technically it is pretty exciting. And in essence, this is a red giant. Technically, a red giant variable star approximately 180 light years away. Here's actually one of the older observations from the European Southern Observatory, in this case in infrared light. And in the infrared, it is the brightest star once again after our sun. But even in terms of the overall size, or basically how big it appears from planet Earth, this is the largest star out there. Which of course means that it presents us with the easiest target to study the surface. But in the past, it has not really been studied much, and it's actually not really that well known, mostly because it's predominantly visible from the southern hemisphere. And because of this, until recent advances with telescopes like ALMA, these stars were difficult to study. But we still know quite a lot about it. For example, we know that it used to be very similar to our sun, although possibly a little bit more massive. But it has now lost enough mass to potentially only be 70% the mass of the sun. And that's because it's a red giant, so it's actually in that stage where it's now shedding its outer shell and is already at least 350 times bigger than the sun. And that's of course why it's relatively easy to see. As a matter of fact, it's even easier to see than Betelgeuse. And so by observing the star for a relatively long time, Wouter Vlemings and his team were able to discover unusual motion on top of the star, as reported in the recent study you can find in the description. And while well, it turns out that our Doritos seems to be bubbling, or it's basically producing giant bubbles of hot gas at least 75 times bigger than our entire sun with each of them approximately 100 million kilometers side to side, and basically surfacing and then sinking relatively quickly. And what this most likely represents is of course convection, but convection at the scale we've never seen before. Here we're talking about huge bubbles moving around the star, which as you can see from this observation were pretty clearly visible. Which is of course the first time anything like this has been seen outside of the solar system. But because this was not just one image, but technically a time lapse, here it became possible to compare this to what we see on the Sun and to of course what we expect from similar stars. And turns out that this is not at all what was expected. Here, compared to previous predictions and previous observations, these bubbles were way way faster, disappearing very quickly despite their size. Here a single bubble would only last for like a month, which is a little bit unusual and currently difficult to explain. And so exactly how this convection works in these giant stars has now just become a little bit more mysterious. But because this is just a recent study, we don't really have a lot of details. Just these super accurate observations from a very very far away star somewhere out there. But this was just the first star. The second star, Polaris, was just as exciting. And here we're talking about one of the most iconic stars that humanity has used for navigation for thousands of years and a star that even today we don't actually understand very well. Here's actually one of the best pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope and even here we can barely see anything, although we do see its partner. And in this binary there is an F-type yellow supergiant that's orbited by a main sequence yellow dwarf. Although there is actually another star known as Polaris B orbiting even farther away from this binary. Here is possibly what all three of them look like if we were to try to visualize them, at least based on what we know about stars. But the thing is we don't really know much about this star because even its mass was a little bit mysterious. But now for the first time ever, Nancy Evans and her team observe a surface of a Cepheid variable star, and in this case, Polaris. 
Now Cepheid variables, if you've ever heard of these stars before, are actually super important for modern astronomy. Here are just some of the Cepheid variables located near the center of the Milky Way. And these are basically blinking stars. But they blink or twinkle in an extremely specific way. Their pulsation frequency directly depends on the diameter and the temperature, allowing us to work out a kind of a relationship. A relationship between the absolute magnitude and the pulsation period, which basically allows astronomers to use these stars as what we call distance candles. So by knowing the pulsation period of a typical Cepheid variable, we can then basically determine its overall brightness. And by knowing its brightness, we can then determine how far away it is. Which is actually how back in the days, specifically I think like 1928, um, and I can't believe I forgot already, the iconic Edwin Hubble was able to officially confirm that Andromeda was a galaxy and not just some cloud close to us. He actually discovered a Cepheid variable inside Andromeda and the distance to that star appeared to be over 2 million light years. And so on that day, this is when scientists officially determined that the universe was actually absolutely ginormous. Before that, the universe was only thought to be approximately 100 to 200,000 light years across. But we still have so many mysteries about these Cepheid variables, and we still barely understand them at all. For example, there is something known as the Cepheid mass problem, which is an unexplained phenomenon when it comes to inconsistencies between total brightness and the total mass of a typical Cepheid variable. And so by directly studying Polaris, we can finally solve all of these problems and thus use Cepheid variables for even more accurate calculations of distances. And well, this is kind of what the surface here looked like. The images revealed a lot of large, bright and dark spots on the surface that once again changed over time. And so these are obviously star spots, but in this case, enormous in size. But discovering these types of star spots already solved one of the mysteries of Polaris. Today we know that Polaris has a very low pulsation amplitude, or basically there's very little difference between its dimmest and brightest points. And it actually could be because of these dark spots on the surface. At least that's what the study hints at. At the same time, here the scientists were finally able to work out its exact size. This star is 46 times larger than the Sun, and is now determined to be 5.13 masses of the Sun, with the exact distance being 446 light years. And so basically now we have extremely exact calculations for the distance, the mass and the size of the star that has previously been suggested to be very different. But interestingly, even though its mass is now believed to be at least twice as high as we previously thought, this star still seems to be just a little bit brighter than it should be. And so there are still some unexplained mysteries here. On top of this, there's actually a very unusual mystery in regards to the changes in its pulsation. The pulsations here are not constant and they seem to change over time. For approximately 150 years, up until 2010, the period of pulsation has actually been getting longer. It's actually been increasing by about 5 seconds every single year. But then something happened. And in the last 15 years, the pulsation started to suddenly get shorter. Previously, this was kind of unexplainable. But now, based on this study, researchers believe that it's actually the effects from its partner. In other words, because there's something in orbit here, it seems to affect the overall period of pulsations and either increase them or decrease them based on the position in the orbit. And it possibly happens because of some kind of a changes in the upper atmosphere of the star as its partner gets closer or farther away. But that's of course not something we can prove yet. These are just assumptions for now. And the only thing we know for sure is basically that the star has these enormous dark spots that seem to move around pretty fast and affect its brightness over time as well. But here the biggest achievement is just the fact that we can even see this. Once again, a few years back, Hubble could not see anything here. And so in just a decade, telescopes have already advanced to the point where we can see stars' surfaces, which means that maybe in two to three decades, we might even see surfaces of planets. Um, hopefully. Okay, maybe like 30 years. Uh, 50 years? Anyway, in the future. And so assuming that technology and astronomy improves over time, we're definitely going to be seeing more and more, eventually solving a lot of other mysteries, and hopefully at some point, discovering something super exciting somewhere out there on some distant planet. But until then, check out all of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.